Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Anna the Archer Let's Play. We are playing Calamity on Revengeance Mode, and this is a bow-only playthrough. Last episode, we left off after defeating the Moon Lord and unlocking the Luminite tier. Our inventory, as you can see, is completely filled and looks pretty chaotic, but there's actually a lot of rhyme to reason for why I've got all these items here. This can craft into a whole bunch of cool stuff. So the first thing we can craft is the Living Dew. So the Living Dew we craft from these different bulbs that you get from the jungle, as well as Gypsy Powder and Beetlejuice, which we farmed up last episode. So we got that. And now we can craft Honey Dew, which combines Living Dew, Bottled Honey, Beeswask, and Beezoar. We have that. Another thing we can craft is this archaic powder. That's from ancient fossil, demonic bone ash, ancient bone dust, and bones. And then we can uh, craft the corrupt flask, and that is the fetid essence and rotten chunks. Also, we have the radiant ooze, which is from murky sludge and purified gel. And that leaves us with the Ambrosial accessory, so we'll craft that. So what the Ambrosial accessory does is adds four defense, 25% increase in mining speed, it emits light, 5% increase in damage reduction and life regen, and honey-like life regen with no speed penalty. The main thing is really getting that life regen and the damage reduction. The next thing we want to craft is for the Abyss. It's going to combine all of these things, the iron boots, the plating, the diving gear, which we've crafted a few episodes back, and some of the items that you get from the Abyss. And there it is right there. It is the Abyssal Diving Suit. So we'll grab that. And that is awesome. One thing I really love about the diving suit is that it makes a really cool cosmetic change to your character. You look like you're ready to go for some ocean exploration. The next thing we can craft is a new upgrade for our boots. All it requires are wings, any type. So I'm using these uh, cosmetic wings, one of the developer wings. Then the angel treads, cores of calamity. We need three of those, bars of life and luminite. So we'll go ahead and craft that as well. What that does is it combines wings and boots and increases your speed. Lots of good stuff there. So the next thing is this bottom row right here. This is going to combine into such a cool bow. Really excited. The first thing is the spirit flame. All you need for that are forbidden fragments, souls of night, and a desert spirit lamp. Really easy stuff to farm up. We have a bunch of forbidden fragments from all of the desert farming we've already done. From there, we just need to combine galactic singularities, the spirit flame, shadow flame bow, the Great Bow of Turmoil, our Blade Ridge, and the Dark Echo Bow with Luminite. And it forms the Astral Defeat. So there we go. Huge upgrade for our bow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that looks like it's doing homing attacks. We can also upgrade our Daedalus Storm Bow and our Cosmic Bolter and turn those into the Planetary Annihilation. And there it is. That's pretty sweet. Now that we are post Moon Lord, we are gonna need to farm up some of these mobs that spawn in this biome. Okay, here we go. I just put on a Zerg potion because the spawn rate was really low on these guys. And let's take them out and get some good resources here. So we need to farm up lots of these resources. They drop these unholy essence, so that's what we need to farm. I'm just testing out some of my other bows. Like right now I'm doing the planetary annihilation. I don't really like it. It's a little bit clunky. This bow is pretty sweet, the clockwork. Although nothing can beat this astral bow. The queen bee just appeared out of nowhere. I don't understand. It must be a glitch or something, because I've had that happen quite a bit. 
Interesting. So we can craft the item that will summon the sentinels. The rune of Kos. So we can also craft profane shards. So that will summon the profane guardians. Let's go ahead and craft that. And then let's craft this rune of Kos as well. I don't think we're going to fight the profane guardians just yet because I have a couple things I want to do first. The main thing is I want to go fight Astrum Arius, which should give us the jelly bean, which will be a replacement of our current slime. And then let's summon it. Okay. It might actually be stronger now. I don't know though. It's hard to tell. Yeah, this is probably a stronger version. Because I'm doing a lot of damage. It should be dead by now. Or I'm just forgetting how hard it was originally. <laughs> Regardless, we'll be able to get it. There we go. Whoa, and it drops tons of solar, all this sort of fragments. That's awesome. Yeah, that was definitely an increased power to the Arius boss. And there we go, we got the jelly bean. Remember when I was fighting Leviathan a few times when I was trying to drop down and evade Leviathan, it ended up bouncing on him and I would die? Well, I think this mount doesn't actually bounce on enemies. And so I think it also falls a little bit faster. I don't think it mentions in the tooltip, but when you have it equipped, you see my defense goes up by 60. So it's actually pretty sweet. Let's see if we can fight the profaned guardians they're what we need to kill before we can start fighting providence so let's just get this going this is one of those boss fights where you can't leave the biome because then they'll get a lot of resistances and you just really got to keep moving on these guys Ooh, it's kind of a cool song. Okay, we got one. Man, this bow is so crazy good. I'm feeling pretty dang strong for... Revengeance post Moon Lord. I think bows have a lot of good upgrades right off the bat. Plus, all of our accessories are really powered up. Throw on that rage. And we've almost got him. There we go. Easy peasy. And we have a consumable profaned core. One thing I wanna do is craft new arrows. They're like the upgraded holy arrows. So I've crafted 4,000 arrows right here and I'm hoping we have a bunch of unicorn horns because we need to craft holy arrows first. And I just noticed we can craft a non-consumable profaned core. I'm not sure if that was a thing back when I played this the first time, because I remember having to fight those profaned guardians a bunch, but I may have just not known about this. So that's really sweet. So that means we don't have to fight them each time we fight the boss. 
And let's craft a whole bunch of holy arrows. Now the next thing is to turn the holy arrows into Elysian arrows. So let's craft it real quick. But we can just replace holy arrows altogether. And we can put those away. There we go. They shoot down meteors. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. That's really sweet. I think I want to try using the Astral Defeat against the boss. And by the boss, I mean Providence. So let's go ahead and give it a try. This, I'm not, you know, hoping for anything amazing on our first try because I'm rusty and this is a hard boss. So let's just see how we do, see how much we need to practice, see how quickly we're doing damage and all that good stuff. And we need to make sure we stay close to the ground. So we're doing damage pretty well, actually. We need to really watch out for those little mines that he drops. The song is so awesome. <laughs> Our movement speed's actually really good for this boss. And let's see how this weapon works. I don't know where he's at. There he is. So we're doing like 8,000 DPS, but we can get a better range on him. Oops, I missed that. Although there's more visual clutter with this, which actually makes it kind of hard. So we'll pop a heal. Oof, we're taking damage. Oh no. <laughs> okay, this this is rough. But we still have a chance if we can get a heal. 20 seconds off a heal? I don't know. Ten seconds. Okay. <laughs> That's rough. One thing I want to do is figure out a better way to set up the arena so I don't have to stay so close to the ground because that's one of the things that's impacting me the most. I'm going to go ahead and create an activation rod and then Louis AFK has an improved activation rod. Let's go see how this works. I guess we can put this as our start of our arena. So I'm going to put down a bunch of pearl stone. And then, awesome, that's really easy. Now time to actuate this whole line right here. There we go. And now I can just stand on this bottom one and add another layer. I don't leave the arena until I'm right about here. Basically right when this leaves the screen. Okay, that gives me a lot more space to stay within the arena and stay doing damage. Yeah, this is so much better being able to fly. I can drop down. I want to try to stay down here until we need to start getting up.
those little fires that he shoots out, some of them actually heal you. And I think I got one or two of them. And let's see how this does. Okay, we're doing much better. This arena actually is quite helpful. Because then I can head above him. Ooh. Taking some hits here. Okay, we just need to take down these guardians. And we're 16 seconds off a of heal. Five seconds off a of heal. Let's get over here. Oh no, we're getting so close. No. <laughs> we really need to kill those guys faster. Usually I like to just fight this in the underworld and I might go ahead and do that because I think the underworld can be a little bit easier. But my underworld doesn't really have a good space for it. So I'd have to build an arena. But I can go ahead and do that. Because then we don't have to worry about leaving the biome. And we're going to have a lot more mobility. At least for our first clear. Another thing I just realized that we can do. Which will help us a lot on this boss fight. Is craft super healing potions. Which are just normal greater healing. Which I've got a bunch of. Plus the nebula fragments and all that. So we just crafted 80 of them. That should be good. Then we can actually upgrade these once more to Supreme Healing Potions. And these just require a little bit of the Unholy Essence, which we've got a ton of. So let's go ahead and just craft all of these into the Supreme version. That'll bump us from healing 150 each time that we need it to 250. So that's actually a huge boost. I basically cleared out so much of this space. We probably won't need it, but it will give us a lot more height and ability to really maneuver and everything. So I think we're going to be just fine. It's the ugliest house I've ever built but it's in the underworld, so who cares? Now we get started. I'm gonna try using this bow, potentially, and see how it works. Oh, this is so much easier. I can just run away. So this time, if I get Rage or Adrenaline, I'm going to save it for after he summons the next phase. Right there, I got Adrenaline, so I'll save that.
Did I get them all? Nope, I got one left. And seven seconds till a heal. I really? No! Oh my gosh, that last part is so tricky. Okay. We're ready to go. I like this bow because I just can mainly focus on holding the trigger down and then just dodging. I'm going to take this down to the next level. It should help. I'm only using the top two levels. Wow, I'm doing some serious damage this time. Okay, the guardians are spawned. Let's try to take these out first. This is where my fight always falls apart. Okay, well, we're doing pretty well right now. Throw on our first heal of the fight. Not too shabby. So it looks like we have one guardian left. This gar last guardian is always hard to kill. Okay, 18 seconds off the heal. Seven seconds. We might have this. We might have this. Got him. Yes. We got Providence. That feels amazing. Whew. I'm safe in our little box right here. That feels so good. That boss fight can be crazy hard sometimes. And what do we have? We've got a shield. Nice. I think I want to get out of the underworld. Let's head back to base. Shake my arms out for a second. Got all super stressed there at the last minute, hoping I wouldn't die. It says, place in your inventory to imbue all projectiles with profane flames, causing them to inflict extra damage. However, your max life is decreased due to part of your soul being required to fuel the profane flames. It drops my health by like 100. I don't know. I don't like that. I'm putting that away. The Aegis Shield is immunity to fire blocks, holy flame, extra health, life regen, grants a holy flame dash, can be used to ram en enemies, press N to activate buffs to all damage, crit, and defense. Activating this buff will remove, reduce your movement speed. Honestly, this, this might be better 
than our Asgard's Valor. I'm not 100% sure though. For now, I'm just going to leave our Asgard's Valor on. Yeah. And then we'll put this in with our special accessories for things that we'll upgrade later on. Now we can check out what we have in our treasure bag. Sweet. We got a blazing core. We have an awesome rogue weapon. And then we have divine geodes. So the geodes are what I'm really looking for. The geodes craft into tarragon armor. So we need divine geodes and eula bloom. I think that's a great stopping point for this episode. We've defeated the Profane Guardians and we defeated Providence in the Underworld. We still have to upgrade our armor with this new Eula Bloom material that we just unlocked. And we have Providence to defeat up above in the Hollowed Biome with that arena we built. So we will do that next episode. I hope you all are enjoying the Let's Play. I sure am. And if you are, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.